Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode. In this episode, we're going to have a look at Azure Functions and more specifically, how to put some GraphQL into Azure Functions. We are running workshops at NSD conferences throughout this year. So if you want to learn all about GraphQL in the .NET ecosystem and beyond, for instance, using Hot Chocolate in combination with Relay.js, or using Hot Chocolate with Blazor or Maui, head over to the NEC conference website and check out our workshops. If you like our content, please hit the subscribe button so you not miss any new episodes of us. And with that, let's get started. If you want to get started with Azure Functions, it's nowadays super simple to do that. There is a GitHub repository here where we can find the Azure Functions core tools. And if we scroll a bit down, you can see there are a lot of install instruction for the tools for the various operating systems. So I'm on a Mac, so I used Homebrew to install the Azure Functions tools and select the correct version for my tools. It's very simple to get started. I already have that set up. If you just want to have a sneak peek at this, go to the Azure Functions core tools repository on GitHub look for your operating system and just run a script and then you're good to go. Okay, let's head over to VS Code and start a bit with Azure Functions. Let's pull up the console and the easiest way here to get started with Azure Functions or anything with Hot Chocolate and GraphQL in .NET is to install our templates. In order to install our templates, you can do .NET dash I and then you select our Hot Chocolate templates. And I'm using the newest preview because that's where we have a lot more Azure Functions templates. Okay, so I'm installing these now. And then you can see I have three templates here. One is the Hot Chocolate Server. And that's just if you want to start with ASP.NET Core as your foundation and Hot Chocolate on top of it. But we for a long time already support Azure Functions in the classical approach where your Azure function runs in the same process as the function. But the new approach with Azure functions is to use the isolated process. Now with Hot Chocolate 13, it's essentially the same from a setup standpoint. So in order to create a new Azure functions, we just do .NET new GraphQL and then Azure functions isolated process here. So I'm running that and let me get rid of the terminal. And let's have a look at the files. And you already can see that we now have a project here, Azure Functions. We have here the actual function that serves our GraphQL. And let me quickly restore. Okay, that's restored. And all the squiggles are gone. And this Azure function is already set up to serve GraphQL. Essentially, we are injecting a GraphQL request executor here. And we are forwarding the HTTP request data to the executor and the executor will handle the rest. If we look at the program CS, it looks very similar to like the ASP.NET Core setup. We have a builder here. There are some defaults configured for Azure Functions. And then we are adding here our GraphQL function and essentially chain in our GraphQL configuration. If we look at the GraphQL types more closely, it's the same. So you don't have to change anything here. Okay, with that, let's start the function. So let's get rid of the file explorer, pull up the terminal, and then we run func start. And func start will start the emulator for our Azure functions and serve this Azure functions for us. Okay, and now you can see our function listens for get and post requests on this UI down here. And let me just grab that. Go over to Banana K-Pop, create a new tab, post that in here, and let's have a look at the schema. You can see the schema is already loaded. We can see here we have our person resolver. We can drill in and we can see that person has a name. And we also could just query that. I get for the person name here, run that, and we get Luke Skywalker. But there's more to this. So this is the banana cake pop app, but actually we could just get a browser, post in our URL here, run that, and you can see 
that the Azure function even serves as a banana cake pop, which we could now use to query our graph. Okay, that's what that was easy. So what are the limitations? The limitations are that you don't have subscription support. So if you don't need subscription at the moment, then this is fine. It works. It has support for queries, mutation. You can use defer with it and all the other execution features. If you're using the classical mode, so the classical GraphQL Azure functions, you can even use subscriptions over GraphQL for SSE. GraphQL server-side events. But with the isolated process, you could use it, but you cannot cancel the subscriptions. And that is essential so that clients can unsubscribe from a subscription and the server can terminate the processes that are bound to it. With the standard Azure Functions support, you can use GraphQL SSE for subscription as of preview 51. Okay, quick recap. So with the templates, you have a very easy way to create a standard GraphQL server for .NET, .NET new GraphQL, or to serve up a GraphQL Azure function in an isolated process, or use the classical approach where the GraphQL function runs inside of the Azure Functions process. The isolated process doesn't allow for cancellation, so there is no cancellation token support, and we don't get signaled when an uh, Azure function is cancelled by its client, and that pretty much excludes it from using subscriptions with it. You can use the standard approach to run subscriptions with GraphQL SSE as it supports cancellation tokens. To get a quick overview, what capabilities which Azure Functions approach gives to you, you can head over here to the Microsoft documentation. I will post this URL into the description of the video. And there you have a quick table showing you which .NET version you can run in in-process mode or in out-of-process, the .NET isolated mode. And you can see only in the isolated mode you will be able to run .NET 7, for instance. But there is another interesting table down here which shows you more the features that you get in each mode. And there you can see that the in-process mode has support for cancellation tokens, whereas the out-of-process mode doesn't have that. So choose whichever feature you need to pick the right version of Azure Functions for your GraphQL server. And with this, we are done. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video and help us grow our project by starring us on GitHub. Thank you. See you next time.